After somehow going from fourth in the league at the first half of the second season with Celta Vigo, all the way to 14th in the second half of the second season from Celta Vigo, what will happen in the third season? Will it be glory? Or will it be a uh, sacking? Because it's going to be one of those two, I reckon. I don't think there'll be an in-between. But with the board hardly giving us any money, can we somehow wrangle a deal for good players coming into the side, gets rid of some of the people that weren't playing, poo the team, and get into UEFA position? Well, let's figure it out. We've actually gone all the way to the 9th of September 2025. No one came in for us, uh, like last season where Marseille and Atlanta asked us if we wanted to come join them or well, they offered us interviews and we ended up not getting the job, but nothing happened with that this season. I expect that is because of our really bad poor form from what, January all the way till May. In terms of the £7 million we had to spend, uh, we spent a lot trying to figure out what we can do with it. So, first off, Javi Manquilla, who was hardly playing and his deal was ended at the end of the season, um, or this end of this season, uh, we ended up selling him for £350,000 to Almeria. Ivan Villar, who, to be honest, I didn't want to get rid of, but in the end, Ipswich came in for about £10.5 million altogether. I think it was £9 million, well, £7.5 million up front, £1.5 million after, a month, after 12 months, and then an extra... One and a half million if he played one game for them. And I thought that is a good deal, so I accepted it. And I then ended up going and signing Marco Koneski, who is a goalkeeper from Ath uh, Atlanta, three million pound. Uh, he is a star player. Where I said we could accept him, but he's on hardly any wages, so that's good. But then he rejected it. Villar rejected it, and so we'd already signed Koneski. So we're like, okay, we've got to get rid of Villar because. Villa was on like £30,000 a week uh, and our new goalkeeper Kineshki was on 10000 so I thought even if we could get £8 million and then he, Kineshki had joined us for three, we'll at least have £5 million to spend on another player. So yeah, um, Ivan Villa was sold to Fuantina for £8.5 million, so goodbye to him. Uh, we also ended up signing Leandro Mogala, who is our backup right back for the season they could also do duty at centre back um, he's basically a uh, back up for if I can remember his name Mingueza um, Mingueza will be the star and if he's not playing at all much halfway through the season I'll put him on the loan list and he can be loaned out and hope to get good game time that way, but yeah, Magala joins us. Then we also sold another player, Matthias Oliveira, who has caused some of the players to be unhappy because we sold a star player. Um, now, he was a player who joined us in the first season during January, which was down to football for £7.5 million. Pounds. He didn't do too badly, but it's average rating, maybe not brilliantly now that I think about it. But Damak came in £10.5 million. Pounds um well 10 million pounds starting off then 500,000 pound after a game and eventually it rises up to 12.25 million when he plays another game or something and i just thought that is such a good deal I i'll accept it and hopefully we can get a replacement left back he maybe might be a bit younger and we can maybe sell for even bigger profit than 12 million so yeah, Oliveira left, which was a bit sad, but yeah. Um, Tassa Stulvacassi was said at the end of last season that we would try and sell. Uh, Eintracht Frankfurt came in for him and 2.9 million, rather four and a half, nearly, after he plays like one game internationally. So 3.9 all up front or over the course of a few years. And an extra 5,000 once he plays another game for Greece which he will do. And we also learned out Sergio Diaz, who could have been in my first team plans, but I decided against it. 
and Miguel Rodriguez, another player that could have been my first two plans, but I decided against it. So both of them have been loaned out. Hopefully they'll get to two and a half star by the end of next season when they come back. But yeah, um, more signings happened in the end. Hugo Satella was loaned out to Bochum for two million pound loan fee, uh, which ain't that bad. And he's actually improved like massively already to three star current ability, which ain't that bad at all. Not bad at all. And then Tadio Leande, who was unhappy, we were trying to sell him. Uh, in the end, his minimum fee release clause was met by Leicester of 7.75 million. And yeah, I'm glad he's gone because he wasn't playing for us. And getting them paying the maximum they could pay ain't that bad. Also, loaned out people like Joseph Ido, who was um, one of our best players at the start of the game. Uh, start of season one, um, but had a 12 month injury where he's now just not playing, so he's been loaned out to Las Palmas where he could join them permanently. And yeah, uh, Hugo Alvarez, another young player who could get gold, has been loaned out to Rayo Majada Honda. Hopefully, he can get better and improve. But then we signed three more players with the Allende money, with the money that comes in from Satello, um, because there's a glitch in the game where if you get the money over the course of a few uh, of a season, you get it all automatically, even though you, you probably get it over the course of the season every so often. You get it all up front. I don't know if it's glitch or if it's meant to work that way, but it also works where if you have an optional future fee, even if the optional future fee is never triggered, you then say get five million pound. If it's like a five million pound optional future fee add-on, you get over twelve months. You then get an extra five million pounds in your transfer budget. So yeah, it's confusing, but yeah. Uh, with that money, we signed Noha Lamina, who was signed by Plymouth in the end in the Premier League. Wayne Rooney got Plymouth Argyle promoted in the first season. He then had a decent season in the Premier League and yeah, uh, he had the minimum fee release clause or relegation release clause of 10.25 million. We snatched him up on that offer and he has joined us as our new main choice left winger. And we also signed Al Haji Malik Diouf as our main choice left back. He's going down in current ability but his potential ability is five star. And it comes in from Slavia Prague. 5.5 million bit of a price if a player that's two star, but at the time it was two and a half star, so maybe not overpriced. Eh? Uh, he's had an awful average uh, rating, so it's gone from two and a half star to two star because of that. Yeah, hopefully he can do decently for us this season. As I mentioned, it's left back, mind you. And Thomas Bazic comes in as another one of our main choice midfielders. I had to accept star player for him bit of a high wage but I thought eight million pound for him and the quality he is from Dynamo it's worth it and if we could sell him for 15 million later on uh minimum for release cause is 28 million I have also had to accept the sell on face so um we paid a lot of money to get him in and yeah thankfully he's joined us and he's gonna be a good player. But yeah we've actually started off Averagely, uh, again, another start. Two wins, two losses. Um, those two wins were against Mallorca and Osasuna. The two losses were against Cadiz and Alaves. And actually, we lost every single game of pre-season. Which I was so worried that this tactic we tried out, I well, this tactic I'd formulated um, with three midfielders in the centre wouldn't work. That I just quickly removed the midfielder in the centre all the way down to a DM kept everything else exactly the same and hopefully this won't do too badly now we have locked in Duth like I said we would we've also locked in Lamina because if I did um, pick best 11 it won't pick Lamina and yeah um, Sol Bakken who I said we should have probably locked in last season he's been locked in for this season at least for the first half of the season until they come back in january or end of december to see what's happening but yeah same ahead now to end of december early january and just yeah see what happens right 
it is 30th of December and we're actually fifth place. So hopefully this is not a full fun grace like it was last season where we ended up being fourth place and then we've dropped all the way down to 14th. So hopefully this doesn't mean we'll drop all the way down to what? 15th. Yeah, fifth place. Not that bad. We're in a continental position. Um, they're still expecting mid table this entire time we've been at this club. But yeah, um, we have a load of people though unhappy, so I might have to figure out what to do with that. So far, fifth place, half a pretty season. I don't think we need of a tactics change. Uh, I've also ended up putting in um, Willit Svedberg as a um, guaranteed player because he is unhappy. He wants initially agreed playing time, basically, he wants to get into the national setup. And I don't want to lose him, so I'm just going to be playing him. Uh, at least until he's loaned out, because I have put him on the loan list, just in case. But yeah, hopefully keep this going up, get Continental Football. That is the aim now. Continental Football, come on, Salta Vigo. <sighs> we didn't do it, and look at that form towards the end of the season. <laughs> Awful form towards the end of the season. No wins in five, two draws. If we had at least won one of those games, we would have got Continental Football, we would have got Euro for Euro, Europa Conference League Football. But, end of the season, it looks awful. Schedule, it wasn't too bad, and then all of a sudden we just had an awful end of the season after a Real Madrid dumper. Just because you lose 4-1 to Real Madrid doesn't mean you then have to go awful against Elche, Valencia, Real Sporting, Real Valladolid, Real Vallecano. To be honest, playing Real Madrid and Barcelona and losing both games heavily kind of influenced the fact that, yeah, um, morale and the morale then went down and we couldn't recover. And because of that, yeah, because of that, we didn't get confident in football because Real Madrid and Barcelona were two games in uh, almost a row. Now, did the Red Football make any signings? No, he did not, but I don't think I left him much. Apparently, we've been given £36 million. Pounds. So, someone been sold. Let's see. Yeah. We sold Cass Udenthal. So, his release clause must have been met by Arkadzia, uh, who last. We signed him in the second season for £6 million. Pounds. He didn't do too badly in the first season. Second season, he also didn't do too badly. Um, but Al Khazir, obviously, with the money from Saudi Arabia, thought, oh, I'll add matches release clause, which they have. And yeah, he's joined them for 17 minutes. So we lost a player because of his release clause. It's bad because it might have derailed our season. But to be honest, it's not the end of the world because we've got an 11 million pound profit. And hopefully, the board decide, you know what, I'm going to let you spend this 36 million pound next season. Even if it drops it all the way down to like 20 million, I'll be happy. Um, but we, if we get 36 million pounds spent next season, I won't spend all of it. I would think maybe just some couple of big transfers and some of the smaller ones to match out the squad with younger players. Hopefully that will go well. Because yes, we're staying one more year with Celta Vigo. If of course we end up doing anything uh, next season, then we'll probably leave it at the end of that season. But yeah, I'm going to do at least four seasons with South Vigo, and we're on a third season, so yeah, not bad. If we go to team details, actually no, it's team overview. Again, we were near the top of goals, uh, and few shots against. No any average possession. Uh, we had the most dribbles, um, one of the most dribbles made up in fourth place. And we also considered the 8th least amount of goals. No way they didn't clean sheets this time, uh, apparently. Um, no tackles won. No pass completion, no shots for, which normally we were always near around the top. Um, but we were with points per game with 1.5. Not that bad. Not that bad at all. Um, I just think it's very well, I kind of got 4th. Were they even nearly promoted? No, they're expected to finish 16. I think they were near relegation last year. Yeah, past three seasons they were just about to survive relegation. And now 
Pablo Machin, at least I think it's him, yeah, Pablo Machin, uh, ended up taking them all the way to Champions League football. If only that could have been us. Oh, wow. Um, they could get improved now because they've got Champions League football. If only they hadn't been anywhere near that, we would have got seventh and got the Conference League football. Ah, oh, it kind of makes you feel bad now that you realise that you weren't the most overperforming team. It was actually a real corner. Oh well. Um, yeah, in terms of any player stats, uh, interceptions per 90 minutes. Um, Mingueza got 3.55, uh, or 3.5 every 90 minutes uh, and he was the second best on that but yeah um, appearances um, Duth played the most games as well as Lamina but they were both locked in um, and Guaza played quite a lot as well when he wasn't locked in Solbakun played a lot as well when he was locked in as well so those three are to be expected in terms of goals Solbakun did better uh, than Larson did last season so yeah, Solbach needs the better player, and yeah, I should have locked him in last season, um, but I didn't, you know, I, instead it was always Strand Larson playing, but yeah, 22 goals for Solbach and not that bad, Perez got 12, um, and Larson got 6, so after Perez it's not hardly anyone got any goals, and Carlos Perez um, got 10 assists and it was Lamina with 9 not as many assists as I was expecting from Lamina or goals um, maybe not as good as he expected him, as I expected him to be um, Della Tor didn't do too badly he has been under the radar I would assume these past few seasons um, yeah he's just been under the radar these past two seasons this season he did really well on his assists um, he is wanting a new contract Gets until 2028. I'll offer him one at the end of the next season as long as we can keep him. I hope. Uh, Alwyn Sanchez also got seven assists, so he didn't do too badly after last season as well. But though his potential has gone down, but then he's getting older, as expected. Um, Mingueza got five assists. Clean sheets, not as many as last season, but Koneshi got nine and Belladoni got three when he did play. He played quite a few times as well. Uh, in terms of only ones over a 7, it was Bamba um, with a 7.02 and with a whopping 7.13, Carlos Perez. He has really shown you, shown me how good he is. Like, he was good last season, but he kind of went under the radar again because of how poor the season was at the end of the season. But this season, we've done well and he's got 10 goals and 9 assists, 4 player in the match awards, 7.12, average rating in the league. Yeah, he's not that bad. Uh, only problem, he's on 50,000 wages um, per week. Um, <laughs> I don't want anyone over 50,000 or 40,000 to be fair. And I've got three of them in Lamina, who I know I signed him that much. Sanchez, I doubt. Did I give him that much? I surely didn't give him 50,000 pounds for him to sign for us. Unless, because I've got it, that direct football gives him new contracts, so he's just giving them. A whopping £50,000 per week as our highest end player. I wouldn't be surprised with direct football in this game. But yeah, um, a successful season, better than we've had before, but still nowhere near to that Conference League football that we are so desperately wanting. But hopefully, the budgets for next season will be massive and uh, it'll stick around the £30 million mark and we can improve like that. Get two really good players in on like 10 million pounds each and get all the rest on younger players I don't want to bankrupt the club though so i might have to be careful maybe sell some players because of that maybe only spend 20 million now that i think about it and hope the best can be recuperated but yeah that is enough for this episode so if you've enjoyed it like the video subscribe to the channel for more fm24 content videos getting close to fm25 now and um first save the first episode of FM25 when that does come out uh, will be either with Derby County Ladies or Derby County Men. If it's if Derby County Ladies are in the game, it'll be them. Uh, if not, then it'll have to be Derby County. Uh, but I'm hoping that the third tier of English football in the women's game will be in football manager base game. Otherwise, I'm going to be a bit upset. But hey, 
Um, if you're excited by any of that, subscribe to the channel. Check out all my socials down in the description down below. But be Matthew, also known as Samahex, and I'll see you all next time. Thanks for sending out. Bye, everybody.